Hello everyone, my name is Rafael Sanchez and I'm an application engineer at Alter. Today I want to show you a simple yet powerful model of how we can perform active noise cancelling into Inactivate. In this example we could be talking about a car in which we want to eliminate from the perception of the passenger some noise maybe due to traversing a road or a noise from the engine or whatnot. So I want to just show you around the model, show you the algorithm I'm using and run the simulation and have a look at the results. So first of all, how am I modeling the problem and how is the problem set up? Well, we have an external noise source, a noisy signal, and we imagine that we have two microphones. One microphone close to the origin of the noise and another microphone uh, at the point of interest or very close to the point of interest if we were talking about our ears. So we would have a mic as close as possible and we have several transfer function blocks that you will see here that represents the propagation of that noise from the source to the point of interest in the case of the primary path and we are setting them up here. This, I just, this is what I just clicked, the initialization script that is um, a small OML script which is to inactivate as well as Compose's main language. Uh, here we are setting up the coefficients of the numerator and the denominator of the transfer functions that we're using. This one represents the primary path, this one the secondary path represents the path from the source of the noise cancelling signal to the point of interest and also we have one for setting up the feedback that is generated that the feedback that the microphone at the source is going to pick up from the noise cancelling signal. So as you can see they're set up very easily and here we have them as such secondary path dot numerator secondary path dot denominator and so on. What else do we have here? We have basic sum blocks in this exam in this specific case we're adding up the, the noise cancelling signal and the original noise signal that's going to be our error we want to keep for having a successful noise cancellation we want to keep it as low as possible zero ideally right uh, we have another sum for adding up the noise source and the signal that's coming from the propagation from the noise cancelling signal to the microphone at the close to the close to the source of the noise and apart from that we have some scopes for visualizing the signals and these two blocks. These two blocks are super blocks that I have created. What that means is that inside these blocks we have more blocks, a diagram that I've created myself. But first let me go outside of these and talk a little bit about the algorithm that I'm using. This implementation for active noise cancelling is based on an LMS adaptive filter. LMS stands for least mean squares and adaptive means that the filter is going to be changing its weights in order to cancel the noisy signal the best way possible. It's comprised of two steps, updating the weights which happens here and the actual filtering of the signal using those weights which happens here. First let's look at the updating of the weights. The super blocks, the, this super block takes four inputs and provides as an output the weights that we require for our filter. The inputs are the noisy signal, the learning coefficient that we want to set. This one is an on and off switch for uh, turning on the update or off. We don't want it to be working all the time. We might just want to analyze for a bit and then leave the filter running as it is in this case. And also the error, how good or bad it is performing at this moment. So let's go inside and here you can see in this annotation how the updating of the weights work. Uh, we take the weights from the last iteration that is done using this discrete delay and then the current input, well the current end samples in this case, looking here at my initialization script I can see that the order of my filter is 20, n equals 20, I want to have 20 weights in my filter so I'm going to take the last 20 samples and then multiply them by the learning coefficient and the error. Add to that the value of the, the previous value of the weights and that's how I get my output, the 20 weights that I need in this case. 
the second step in this process is then the actual filtering of the signal. This one is even simpler. We just take the, in this case, 20 last inputs from the signal and multiply it by the 20 weights of our filter using this matrix product block. With that, the output is our filter signaled. We multiply it by negative one in order for it to cancel the actual signal. And this is basically it. Now, the next step, let's run it and look at the results. This scope shows each of the weights and how they update. You can see they've stopped updating because I turned the enable switch off and now their weights are going to remain constant. Now they are. And this is the error. As you can see, it starts with a much greater peak because it's the time it takes for the filter to actually adapt in a proper way. And in case you were curious, without the noise cancelling, this is how the noise would look like at the point of interest. Okay, so if you want more detail, you can download the model and play around with it yourself. Thank you very much.